Caddis Maximus here. This time we're talking about the Harbor Freight 9973 2 and 3 quarter inch disc or circular padlock as they call it review and comparison. Actually, I was going to talk. I have a I'm a minor lock collector over the years and actually over the last few months I I looked up occasional YouTube videos and knew like the master lock laminated weren't very good. But I really got myself more up to speed and ultimately uh, for what someone can get off the shelf and like from a locksmith, really the best bet's going to be customizing one of these uh, 930s. Uh, n and definitely none of the Harbor Freight locks. They all have critical issues. Their bicycle lock is the best. But here's their disc lock. It actually gets like a 4.0 review on over 100 reviews. And generally speaking, I'm sure people think it works. It's $5 when it's on sale for the 2 and 3 quarter inch. I've never seen their three and a half inch one, so I assume it's just an online uh, item only. And I try to avoid buying locks online because you never know what kind of key you get. You know, the first uh, depends to uh, as far as picking on locks besides, you know, special designs is the warding. And the long and short of it is, is you probably should just go spend $50 or more and just buy a real bad lock like a best like this. As you can see, it has extreme warding, which is almost impossible to get any type of pick in there that would work the the type of distances you need to move up and down the pin. So just some warding like that and no security pins or anything like that provides you a huge amount of pick resistance. And a block like this will have seven pins and dual shear lines and you can get Cormax versions and it, it goes on and on. Anyway, I recommend uh, Bosnian Bill's channel and, and the lock picking lawyer to a degree as well. Then you can really learn about uh, how crappy all the locks are that people use to lock stuff up. And unfortunately, I'll have to say this about the Harbor Freight. Although it seems like a nice lock for five bucks, it actually is a specific knockoff of this Chateau, which is real surprising. Now we can compare it. You know, we have the Master Lock. Magnum, these had like a rubber boot on them, which was just pointless, so I took it off. But this is one of the Master Lock two and three quarter inch Magnum, you know, born carbide. And here's the more basic Master Lock, the number 40. And so we know it's not a knockoff of either one of those because for two reasons. These have Master Lock's terrible four pin keys uh, and no security pins or anything in them. So it's like regardless of how twist resistant a disc padlock is and that's the main selling points is to get one of these because the shackle goes three quarters of the way around when you open it up we can see inside here with the flashlight there's the other end of the shackle so the shackle goes most of the way around the lock and then it has real limited access space for anybody to get bolt cutters around it uh, this is a sheet metal stainless steel, and regardless of what grade of stainless steel, some of the very best is, you know, 440C, that's what they make knife blades out of. And even if this was fully through hard and 440C stainless steel, you're still going to be able to get through it with the hacksaw. You just have, you know, just a quite a bit of depth to get to cut through. But that's why I've never liked disc padlocks, though, is because of that, the whole the sheet metal body. And since I've learned, you know, about locks and how the cores and everything else can be drilled out so easily, you basically have to use the heaviest duty lock that you can basic that you can effectively afford and then actually do research unless you're buying uh a, you know a specialized brand like uh Abloy or Chubb or something like that from a locksmith. Most people are ending up with locks from Harbor Freight or Master Locks. Uh, which seems to just be sold. I mean, it's ridiculous how dominant master locks are. You go into a grocery store and their microscopic little three foot wide hardware section will have a master lock in there. And you just really are getting cheated. You know, lock manufacturers basically cheat people due to their lack of knowledge. And this is no different. Now, as far as being a knockoff of the Chateau. Now, this is an older Chateau that was not made in China, surprisingly enough. This is made in China, but they don't, you know, they do you the courtesy of not stamping that on there. It is a five pin lock, which even compared to a master lock, that's, a, that's a one more pin, no security pins or anything, but at least it's five versus four no security pins. That'll be the one plus. But one thing we notice about this keyway is we have a square lower or a rounded lower warding and then this little triangular piece of warding and a little angled key. And I had noticed that on the chateaus. It's just a mirror image like the core has been flipped around backwards. It's so 
so much the same that I believe the keys would fit in each lock. If I had extras to cut apart, I could show you. The difference with the Chateau is it's pretty well built. It has a very positive locking mechanism. Uh, it can still be picked and drilled, but if you try to move the shackle, it really is solidly held in place. It moves just a little bit and then just doesn't go anywhere. The other thing about a Chateau is that you get a six pin key, which is actually kind of handy. So these are at storage units where you're, you know, uh, somebody would have to be silent breaking in. And so they're designed to be a little more pick resistant. I don't think they'd use any uh, security pins, but at least having six pins makes it a bit more of an effort. And they've always worked great. The one Achilles heel I'd say is that they have a split right there. But if you're going to use physical attacks against disc padlocks, then you're just going to cut through the section where there's, there's, there's the shackle gap. And uh, maybe a little bit more quietly just drill through the core. I mean, as far as drilling out locks, uh, it's ridiculous. I mean, I'm not a lock picker, so I still drill out locks or grind them off with the grinder. And, you know... It doesn't matter what the hell you're using, you know, a big batty Magnum Master Lock, you know, M930s with big old boring carbide shackles. They, you know, they last maybe 60 seconds against power tools. Always something to keep in mind is that power tools are the great equalizer when it comes to uh, padlocks and your perception of their levels of security. That's for sure. And if the lock is too tough, they'll, you know, people will just go through whatever the heck it's attached to. You'll need to buy a $1,000 Sergeant Greenleaf military padlock to actually have something that is g truly grind and torch and all the different ways people can attack locks. And I'll probably mention that in each of these videos because people may not watch all the videos, but, you know, kind of like the Bosnian Build channel, I don't... You know, pick these, but I want to bring some information, talk about, you know, reviewing these kind of locks like the Harbor Freight Disc Lock, which for all intents and purposes seems fine. I haven't cut one open. It may have zinc components inside, which would suck because zinc melts at 800 degrees versus brass, which melts at 1500 degrees, um, which happens to be the same temperature that you would just raise steel up to just to harden steel. Uh, but that's why brass is used as, as far as aluminum, magnesium, uh, zinc and then brass uh that would be material strengths of softer materials aluminum is obviously a lot lighter white than brass otherwise brass would be you if brass was the same weight as aluminum with the same strength properties it had it would be used where aluminum is normally used here and aluminum would be really far down the food chain now i was mentioning about that how tightly locking that chateau is the problem with this Harbor Freight is, you notice I can, you know, push it over and you think it's, oh, it's pretty well secured in there until I start pushing it over more. This is just using my fingers for crying out loud. I mean, the whole core is twisting over. Look how far over I've gotten that shackle. I've almost got the lip of it exposed here. And I'm sure if I got the lip, if I had a pair of vice grips or something, I could just jam this over a little more and then get a screwdriver in there and fold, uh, force it over. But it's just insane to think that you have a lock that just with your fingers you can almost fully open uh just doesn't make any sense to me even with its little five pins and that issue is an exclusive to the harbor freight this cheaper master lock number 40 if we pull the key out suffers from the same issue it's it's kind of like they copied the chateau's body and cylinder and then master lock sec uh, cheap securement mechanism and all they do is give you an extra pin for that that is different on these master lock uh magnums here these magnums they put in some kind of they change the mechanism in it so it doesn't it does like the chateau or it just absolutely stops plus they have a little bit wider gap and the boron carbide shackle so back to why people use these uh because they fit in tight spaces they tend to just be stored at, used at storage units and so people see them at storage units and say oh this seems like a cool lock it's hard to get bolt cutters around because it's really wide and has a, a small exposed shackle you can only lock it up on so many things. The general recommendation, because the cylinders and everything can be drilled out and picked so easy, is to always mount them backwards. You know, make it, you know, it's not too hard for you to get a key in upside down. It's much harder for somebody to drill and pick when a lock is backwards. And that's about the best thing that I could recommend with this. But with the stainless steel and that corrosion protection, you are sacrificing cut and drill resistance just straight through the body of the shackle, much less the lock core which is brass and, of course, what everybody would attack. Much less if it had zinc components that you can melt with the plumbing torch, which you can also buy at Harbor Freight. 
So generally speaking, for five dollars for all the reviews, unfortunately, it's just people who haven't done any homework at all on locks and haven't spent very much time on YouTube uh, studying up and realizing just how bad the vast majority of bad padlocks sold worldwide really are. And this Harbor Freight for five dollars, no way. I mean, why spend five dollars on that when you can spend just a cup? I seriously like you can get find these on sale for just a few more dollars and. This offers, you know, a minimal amount of additional pick resistance than what the Master Lock does. And at least the Master Lock's going to give you more physical durability, thicker sheet metal on the side, so it's a little, takes a little more time to hacksaw through. And a heavy-duty shackle, you know, works a lot better. Even with all the twist resistance, you know, these uh, disc back lock padlocks have a lot of twist resistance. But, you know, that's all relatively speaking. It's going to be a whole lot less resistance than what this Harbor Freight lock would offer. And certainly a fraction of what those masters or even what an American lock might offer. And we'll get to the American locks and how Harbor Freight has knocked those off on their puck lock. On, you know, their big, this is their direct, the, both of these are direct knockoffs of Americans. That's a master lock knockoff. And this is a kryptonite knockoff, and this is a chateau knockoff. And when they knock them off, they knock them off just right. So they have all the failures and vulnerabilities. And sometimes, like on this one, it's much worse. And I'll probably do, uh, I'll do this one in a few videos. Uh, there's some YouTube videos that came out recently, people popping them open. Uh, Lockpicking Lawyer did that. And, uh, but he didn't go into any details, like that there's a gap so wide between the shackle and body, uh, a small family. Oh, spiders could live in there. Uh, the, the ball bearings don't protrude very far. That's poor quality steel, etc., etc. But this was kind of more about this particular disc padlock. And even for $5, I have a hard time, you know, telling everybody that's recommended. And all the people who have positive reviews are just people who've never actually had somebody attack one of these locks, either by picking it or by physically trying to cut it or, you know, a physical uh, attack. And if I ever get monetized, I'll buy some of these just to do some of the physical attacks. I don't do the lock picking stuff, but, you know, in the last few months, you know, watching YouTube videos, uh, at least it gives me a lot, of, a lot of information how you can buy some of these like Master Lock 900 series and then upgrade them with American Lock pins. And for like $35, uh, you can have a real high security lock and even pull out protection. I've done something inside. These all these locks have like little cams, and I've upgraded them with high-speed steel uh, reinforcing pins. A lot of things you can do to customize locks, and so that's kind of the point of this next review series is just kind of try to talk about the information that I have and what I've learned, get a little more review content, and uh, just generally talk about the locks. I'm not going to recommend any of the Harbor Freight locks. I'll have to absolutely tell you, but for this, for five bucks. And then this thing, which with the cable was like eleven fifty on sale or twelve bucks. This thing is like awesome compared to all the other Harbor Freight locks. And to tell you the truth, it would be a good lock if uh, they didn't have cast zinc locking dogs. So a plumbing torch will melt that lock, and it will just fall apart on you. Even though zinc is actually not a bad material, it has good. You can get alloys with good impact resistance and good hardness. It, uh, and it casts really well. That's why manufacturers, particularly in locks, like to use a master lock is notorious. All their Magnum locks, as far as I know, besides this one, and I haven't been inside this one, all fail the torch melting test. They all cast zinc in them. No joke. All the master lock Magnums. Don't, those are as bad as any Harbor Freight lock. You spend 30 bucks on a lock like this. It has a zinc Bible in it, you know, one of those torch lighters can melt that Bible down in a big old fatty master lock like that. It's crazy. Down the road, we'll get to the new Magnum 9, 930. This thing has a variety of vulnerabilities, which is I just, you know, my heist. The ones I modify are the older versions, not this thing. This thing, real disappointment. Anyway, that's the, la the end of uh, kind of this quick review uh, about the Harbor Freight disc padlock and kind of an overview of the starter uh, of this series. And generally speaking, even for five bucks, you know, I, the only reason is it would be absolutely one of the dirt cheapest locks. And if you're going to get a dirt cheap Harbor Lock, uh, Harbor Freight Lock, 
you know, I don't know what you'd use this for. A cheap kid's bicycle that they can take around where if it does get stolen, you're not so worried about it, but you don't want to spend any kind of significant money on a, you know, somewhat better of a lock. It's the only way I could recommend this. Otherwise, it's pointless, you know. Go get a chateau from a storage unit. At least you'll get a six-pin core and a better securement mechanism in it over the harbor freight that you can practically open with your darn bare fingers. I mean, this is just crazy that I can push this dang shackle all the way over like that. I've never seen something like that before until I found that master lock. And I'll rip on master lock like a lot of other people do from what I've learned, but master lock has its electric history. So over the decades, they made some awesome locks too. It just, and some of these 930s really are them, you know, put some American lock pins in these and reinforce the cam and you've got an awesome lock. Do something about the bottom of it, too. Though all locks are susceptible to drilling. And that's something you have to really remember. All locks are susceptible to drilling. And the reason I'm doing this is there is a variety of drill bits that pe people don't see. Carbide burrs, high-performance German drill bits, cobalt drill bits. These are the cobalt uh, glass drilling bits. Those are actually pretty effective. These R2 are like a uh, traditional masonry bit, but they have a cobalt carbide in them. Real heavy-duty. You can drill through a lot of stuff with those and even higher performance twist drills that are actually twist drills that have carbide inserts. You can just see it in there. That's a high performance drill. Those are special order, very expensive. And then they're like $100 drill bits. Some of these, these are, this is a pure carbide drill bit, 100% carbide all the way through three flute. And uh, these will tear through some pretty, these will tear through any steel that's used on any padlock. I can tell you that. So generally speaking, you always get the heaviest padlock, padlock you can physically uh, afford because it provides the most amount of physical protection and then do a little research to uh, make sure it doesn't have some crazy ass vulnerability like an American lock where you can make, get a skeleton key for the damn things. You have to go to locksmith and get a special wafer and open up every one that you can open up to make sure that it doesn't have that defect in them. What a sore disappointment on the American locks when I found that out. Anyway, we'll be doing a lock series over the next week, and I really appreciate everybody uh, watching and subscribing. I'll definitely be doing more tools. I kind of ran into these and have been doing videos, watching videos over the last few months, and just said, you know, why don't I do that while the information is fresh in my mind, and I have a little collection so I can kind of add to the community, um, and of course, shamelessly get some video content out of it. Once again, please subscribe. Caddis Maximus out.